Okay, so I got the kit from McDonald Carb. Or actually, the float was from McDonald Carb. And I forget what this place was. I got it off eBay. I'll have to put the information down there. The kit looked really nice. So I was just happy with it. So I'm going to give them a shout out. So yeah, it came from eBay. Kali Wog Harbor. It was $71.94. But the kit came with pretty much... Oh, about to lose my part there. Came with most of the stuff, even came with a little jet adjuster screw and uh, came with these nice little brushes for cleaning carb. That's kind of nice. And then McDonald Carb hooked it up with this float. Looks like it's used almost. I don't know. This was the old one, and this one's. It's pretty loose, so I'm guessing that's not good. So, yeah, we have a nice one. It almost looks like it's almost looks like it's adjusted the same. I'll have to double check that spec. It's supposed to be an inch and uh, one eighth, I believe. The rebuild kit came with some really nice instructions. Really appreciate that. Yeah, an inch and one eighth. This is how far the float is supposed to be off. So I'll address that when we get there. So now I wasn't going to mess with this jet and these things because they're soldered in. So I don't know. It didn't come with one of these. So I've got to be real careful. How am I going to hang out if I don't have an extra one? And. But if I don't fix this belt seal, I guess it can pull air through this, so I should probably clean it out. Even though it's not even plugged. There's a ton of solder on the screws. Yeah, I'm debating if I should even take this off. It's, it doesn't have the felt it looks like. But this thing is so hard to tear off. I should probably just go ahead and just overhaul it all the way. So I guess we should take this first. I got my Hacko soldering iron here. Be enough for this. It's real hot, so I don't have to put a torch on the carburetor. That would make me a lot happier. Okay, this is 800 degrees. It's pretty hot. Let's see if it'll. Peeled the solder off here. Dang, this thing's not even melting this at all. Interesting. Well, that's not gonna work. Guess it's silver solder. I'm kind of scared to punch this out because I don't have the tool for that. All I got is a little dinky screwdriver. I'm just screwing it up. <laughs> it's so I guess this controls the air. When this is shut all the way, it lets it breathe still so it doesn't turn off. I believe. I'm not 100%, but. So it has two little marks on there, and you have to put them right in just how you took it out. That way, the settings will be right. So it was actually pretty clean. I didn't really need to take it apart, but it had some crud on there. Not too bad. Okay, let's punch that back in there before I forget how. <laughs> so the mushroom part went on this side. Yeah. This is gonna make things interesting. There. Get this passage cleaned up. 
Kim did left some kind of rust stuff on here. Okay, we'll stick a smaller probe through here. This goes all the way through. Now the next step I'm wondering is if I should remove that cap. So So there's a passage through here from here to here it's really hard to get to and clean I'm wondering if I can get my way in here with this thing just to make sure there's no chunks that are gonna fall off once I get it all ready and going yeah I don't want to mess it up well there's this passage it's open so I'm not gonna mess with it Sweet. okay well let's go ahead and put that back on there so the mush part went down and I got my marks but this is kind of tricky so I'm gonna use these needle nose pliers just to get it started Yeah, this is real tricky. That looks pretty close, huh? That's pretty dang close. Like it's trying to spin on me. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> okay. That looks good. It's trying to spin on me as I'm hammering it. It does look like it's off just a tad. That's pretty dang close. So that's supposed to go flush on this wall in here. You can make a little tool for this, but I don't have one. This thing's supposed to go flush with this wall, just how you put it back in, because it has to breathe. It's got two breather holes on both sides of that pin. Okay, the next step is, so it looks like this is the replacement, Jeff, but it doesn't have a rigid thing on it, so it's going to be hard to adjust. I don't know. We'll figure that out later, I guess. So I'd like, this passage is clear, but I'd like to clean it out. But there's a little cap right here. Let's see if I can get it out. I don't know what 
奔突兀吗 ？Okay, so I almost messed up my tool here. I'm gonna center punch this and drill this out. I almost messed it up here. Sideways, so the material doesn't. This carburetor is not even that bad. Usually this passage in the bottom, that's all the way to the bottom, that's going to be full of crud. And it was it was really clean, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so we just grab one of these 177 caliber lead pellet. Okay, so that passage is cleaned up. So this one goes all the way through like that. I'm gonna wait to put the carburetor on because you can't, when you slide the carb on, you can't get to this nut. So it's easier to put it on and then you can slide this over like that and put it together while it's in the dozer. Otherwise you're dealing with that it's like impossible to get that nut off. But then it's also a lot easier to break this jet. So you gotta be very careful. Okay, next step, we're gonna put the little tiny jet thing in the bigger in the bottom here. The kit does not come with this, so be really careful when you remove this bottom. Okay, we got that one in. Now, it's at the bottom here. So, normally you would take that out to clean the crud out once in a while, but you can't even access this when it's in the dozer. Oh, it has so many problems. Okay. That I'm gonna double check here. This guy back in here, the washer is stuck in there and I can't get it out, but it looks like it's, it's doing its job, so I'm just gonna leave it. Be real careful with this guy. It is already on its way out. I almost need a custom screwdriver for this one. My screwdrivers fit on it nicely. So main plug, all the passages are free. Yeah, this thing just came out like, I remember, oh, this thing is totally stripped. Not good, not good. So this thing was pretty much stripped when I took it out. It just fell out. I was like, hmm, 
little bit of bread if I take the washer off. Interesting. <laughs> so I can't use a washer on this because it's stripped. So what I'm going to do, make sure this is really cleaned up nicely. Let's clean up the surface. So it's nice and flat. Okay, so the only thing I have on hand that is rated for gas is this aviation gasket. It's tacky stuff here. Fill it when it was getting shipped, so yeah, this stuff is supposed to be rated for gas. And it's non-hardening, I believe. Yep, fuel and oil. So, yeah, I'm gonna use this. This should be fine. No overkill for what I need. <laughs> Way too much. This thing's huge. This big one costs the same price as the little one, so <laughs> it's like, yeah, I guess I'll just get that one. This is it has to air dry for a few minutes or four. You put it on there. I've never actually used this stuff, but I heard it works great for working on old equipment, and it's rated for aviation, so gotta be somewhat decent. Yeah, I think that's gonna be plenty. So I'm only biting on one thread in there, so I can't put a gasket. If I put a gasket, then it just strips from corrosion or. It looks like it was from corrosion. I don't think someone actually stripped it out. But yeah, aviation former gasket, this stuff's supposed to be really good. None of the parts stores even sell it anymore. I have to order it online. Okay, we're gonna let that air dry for a few minutes before we put it in there, because that's what the directions said. So let's see, the next step that I can do is we can put this thing back together. I do need to get the clip there's this little screen, so from what I researched, I did this model, it's this is supposed to be like a, supposed to be a check valve, but it doesn't seem like so this, I guess this is an overflow, if the gas overflows, it'll come out this hole instead of flooding out the engine I guess some of the other models they don't have this, so it'll it's a little easier to flood the engine out if you don't know what you're doing. Some guys like these things, some don't. So. So. I mean, I guess moisture could get in here, so. That should be fine. Okay, now we can screw the plug back on with our aviation gasket seal. We only have one thread, sadly. So I guess I don't want to get this too tight. This stuff is really tacky. And I'm just going to hardly snug this because this thing is stripped. It just has one on it. Wherever the half inch reaches. So I'm just snugging it on there very lightly. Actually, soak right here. I'm gonna let that soak for a second, cool off, and then I'll try to pop that out of there. This one's been soaking in WD 40 overnight. Hoping I can pop that off. Soaking for a minute, cooling off. I'm 
not going to worry about it. It's going to get a fine seal. Maybe you suck a little bit of extra here and there. I could try to heat it up one more time, but... Now, let's see if I can get this one. It's been soaking in WD-40 all night. We got it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really wanted to get that out. This is for the float, so it's pretty important that you get a new one of these in there. But sometimes you just are not able to get these things out. Quite a bit of crud built up in there. Big one. Oh yeah, a bunch of crud. Gonna get all this crud out of there because this stuff can plug up your the main fuel hole that feeds the whole carburetor. There's a bunch of gunk in here. So you can get your carburetor all nice and clean and then once you start running your machine and hitting a bunch of potholes and running fresh gas through it, it's going to start breaking down some of this material, possibly, and then it'll plug it up, you'll have to tear it off again, so it's very important to get all this crud out of there. And this stuff, I don't know, this thing sat in Kim thing for a week, I might have to just go back to uh, Marvel Mystery Little. You can see that? Uh, got this tool with this little 90 on it. Works pretty good for cleaning out these threads, I noticed. Okay, I got, I got that pretty dang clean. No way. <laughs> There's no way that's coming off. Damn. Well, there's no way that's coming off. So not without drilling it out. I'll dress that down the road, make sure this machine's gonna run and make me some money first. Dump a bunch of dough into it. Yep, those are identical. This screwdriver almost doesn't fit in the new one. I bought a nipple for this, but I'm converting it to fuel line. So I'm going to get some of that gasket, the aviation gasket on there. I need just a tiny bit. <laughs> and I don't want any of this getting into the fuel system. So Let this dry for a minute because that's what the directions say. Just 
Okay, that should seal pretty good. Just to make sure, let's float in there. Yeah, I don't hear any noises. I'm not sure there's a little bit of aviation sealant on this guy. So we can adjust the float while we're here. Little red gasket. Looks like the right one. Okay, so this one goes all the way through into there. And this is supposed to go on here. It's not going to be one and a half turns. Okay, we are back. So, my concern was there's no main jet in here. There should be a main jet, supposedly. But I looked in there, it's not threaded. So, I don't know if it's just this, this style of carburetor has a different setup. Because this jet screw is a little different than what I found online so yeah it didn't come with one and this thing slides in this hole so yeah weird so I'm just gonna run it that's all I got so I am going to finish putting this on and I do want to take this out so I can put the, these felt and these felt seals, they slide in there. So I was doing some research and I guess they can pull quite a bit of air through that, this passageway through here or through the shaft if the seals are bad. So hopefully I want to get this thing rebuilt so it idles and everything runs great would make me happy so i'm just going to go through the extra efforts um breaking the solder trying to get these shafts sealed up hopefully okay i'm gonna get this stuff together okay so this is pretty much complete i just need to get the little float screw float in there and hopefully this thing did not come with a shaft why did i clean this one up so this is gonna go on here See if this is adjusted correctly. Dimension eight. This is a I don't know what it is, just double checking the old one here, back to where on the old one, we're right at an inch and one eight, it's all about a wrap. We have this little hammer here, can I check it real quick? Not a bit sticky. Blaster. Oh, needle sticking just a tad. Now that we have the pin all the way in, I'm going to double check that we're at an inch and one eighth. So the carburetor float was already adjusted, so that's perfect. So it does look like it's kind of at an angle, a little higher, but that's an inch and one eighth. So I'm going to run with it. Okay, 
I'm gonna put this in later when it's probably in the dozer, but I'm just gonna put the parts together. That way I just I don't lose anything. So let's get this thing back together. I always make sure to put this jet in last so you don't bend it I'm trying to get it back in there. Gasket. Okay. Put everything together so it's complete. Snug these up. Yeah, I'm just getting this complete so all the parts are here. Get all these in there a little bit. Put the main jet in. see here I got some spec okay so this jet you want to go all the way in lightly once you get it all bolted up and then about one and a half turns out and that should get you pretty close to spec and then you can adjust it once it's on the machine okay so I'm all done with this we got a new float new gaskets pretty much cleaned out the whole thing Hopefully my pellet doesn't leak. I'm pretty sure it'll seal up. Um, yeah, we'll set this to the side for now. And those are those grade eight nuts I got for the carburetor. Yeah, this filter actually goes in here. I completely forgot about that. Blow this out real quick. got that filter in there in case it decides to flood we got this overflow I guess we call it okay this is all done complete completely cleaned out I checked all the passages this has a new float now the floats adjusted to where it's supposed to be one and one eighth I can't believe that was the old float man that's must have had some errors in there somewhere huh <laughs> it's just off of a couple Okay, now we need to figure out how to get this off without getting solder in the carburetor. So I might have to put the angle down so the camera's probably not going to get that. And I got my glove up here so I won't burn myself. But yeah, I'm going to have to angle it down. So I tried to use my soldering iron, but it ain't going to hot enough. It's probably silver solder. Okay, so we got the solder off with the torch. So I'll keep this shut so nothing falls on the carburetor. We got the solder out. That wasn't too bad. I was kind of worried I was going to mess up the carburetor. Let's get the solder off this side while we're at it. We got the flathead. Get the bar scoop down. Okay, we got all that metal out of there. Oh, happy with that. Who needs math gas? We got propane. Okay, let's. See if we can pop these loops. Oh yeah. yeah. These things come right out of here. I wonder they put solder on there. Okay, so the little flappy valve goes towards this new jet I got here.
Still got that little check valve in there. That's great. I heard these are missing on a lot of these machines. I guess that's to help it breathe when you start it. There's that little felt seal that's not working anymore. Pop that out, clean out that crud. My quarter inch punch makes life pretty easy. Okay. Move the sand that punch. Okay, we can keep that just in case we need it for the future. But the kit gave us a new one. It's a brand new one right there. There's the felt seal. There's a the little cap. Let me see if I can get this out of here. Okay, cap out. We got the felt seal inside there. Okay, we got the old lint out. Everything's cleaned. Got the new lint seal in the cap. Ready to go. Just gonna tap that in with the hammer. Very lightly. Can't okay, move all this through that lint. Little check valve thing went towards this jet. Scuff up the threads a little bit on the back of these screws so that way they can't come loose. Okay, let's scuff it up just a little bit and then let's put in our new cap here. Okay, so we got the new seal in there. It's working for checking function. Now let's do the throttle plate. going that way and this thing going that way so place it right there I drill a little hole through this so I can try to peel this off Steam punch Drilled into the shaft a little bit, that's not ideal. Brass collar. So this was going just like that, okay. Here's our little belt seal we need to take out. Okay, 
This little hauler the rebuild kit did not come with that, so be careful. Before I get that stepped up, I want to make sure I get that plate. On there. Here, let's see if we can get the plate back on. Okay, so this goes in there like that. Crazy. We got these screws tightened down, collar down a little more. Okay, now there's no in play. We got the new seal. Let's put the cap on. Don't go too far, you'll hit the shaft like I did. Alright, so it seals, jet, main jet goes all the way through. And it's got the new washer on it. This one snugs up. The idle jet goes one and a half or so out. So go all the way in very carefully until it snugs. And then one and a half. One. Make sure that thing's not going to wiggle. It kind of wants to move pretty easy, but yeah, I think it'll be fine. Okay, so we have the felt seals in. I got a big mess here, as you can see. Next step, um, I'm just going to screw this carburetor together with the gasket. That way we are good on that end. I'm going to put this on after I get on the machine. That way you can get to the, the bolt over here. Flip that over here. See this bolt right here. If you put this on, you can't get to it unless you have a custom wrench. But then you got to be careful you don't mess up this jet right here because it's brass. Just gonna hit a little brush. Just pretty sure I already cleaned it, but. I'm gonna put together, I'm just gonna double check what I have. Finger tight these for now because I'm just gonna take them off later. I just wanna lose all my parts. Actually, I'm gonna snug it down that way that this jet's protected. And this jet still moves. Yeah, I believe that's it for the carburetor. It's completely rebuilt. We went through the whole thing. 
The only thing is there's not a main jet on this down here. I don't know what the deal is with that. But that's... It wasn't there when I took it apart. Then maybe it's just a different style of carburetor. I'm not sure if you guys know anything about these carburetors. Feel free to shoot me down a message down below or a comment down below. But that's supposed to have a high jet in there because there's no threaded marks. This adjustable needle goes all the way in there. The other ones I found the needle shorter and then it has a main jet in there. So maybe it works like that. I'm not sure. Hopefully. It ran before until it got plugged up, so hopefully we are golden. Okay, this thing's ready to go on as soon as I get some good weather. I just didn't get that stud out. Sealant on this real quick. I'm going to use a little bit because you don't want it to get in the fuel system. You just want to seal the threads. So you're supposed to let that dry for a couple minutes, so I'm going to let that dry. Oh, I screw that in. Permatex Aviation Forma Gasket. So this thing completely plugged up that dozer before. Thinking of just not putting that back in because it's got a bunch of crusties in there. Use some help. New seal soon. I got some O rings, but I think this one's got some life left in it still. Alright, well, the inside's clean. Okay. I'm going to keep this just for originality and spare parts and hoard it, I guess, because it has a bunch of stuff in there that I can't clean out and soak in forever. And I'm just going to use this float bowl just so I can, it'll still catch some stuff since it's a float, maybe a water separator. Okay, so Pe Peacock is uh, cleaned out, ready to be converted for a uh, regular fuel line here. I guess I could put this on real quick. Okay, that's nice and tight. That's not going to leak. And then I have a bunch of these inline fuel filters. That I just tore up for no reason. <laughs> that I'm going to put two more just in case for safety. And also I'm probably going to run ethanol free gas on this thing since it just hardly takes any gas. Okay, we are good to go. I just have to wait for electrolysis on the fuel tank. And then once I get some good weather, I can go down to the dozer and slap this stuff on and hopefully it'll get fired up and I can re that head. Then I can start flushing out the radiator. We'll see you on the next one.